So, good morning. Very early, early. Uh, yeah, filling in, so trying to keep it mostly brief. Hopefully, the actual speaker will show up not too long from now. Apparently, there was some talk about um, the difficulty in recording conferences, which, as it so happens, I know a thing or two about. So, I am a software engineer in regular life. I have a full-time job with that. Um, but on top of that, I also record conferences. And I've been doing them throughout for the, for the past two years, just quite literally everywhere. I've been in England, Singapore, India, but also I do pretty much all the B-Sides conferences in Europe, um, at least the ones that will allow recording. So yeah, um, I know a thing or two about this. Um, so what does it actually take to record a conference, not a lot. This is a conference that is being recorded. What you're seeing down there is a smartphone on a tripod. Boom, you're done, you're recording a conference. It really can be just that simple. The, uh, the, the, the wire that you see coming here from the side leads to a power pack so the thing lasts long enough. But yeah, that's it. You got audio, you got video. If you position it properly to also look at the screen, you're also capturing the slides, you're done. But of course, you want to do nicer, if, if, you're at all, if at all possible. So, we improve audio. Now, most, not all, but most conferences have one of these lovely things, a mixer and uh, microphones and such, and you want to plug into that. All these things work off of something called XLR. It's a three pin connector and you plug that in over there. Um, and Iron Geek uses something that is a bit mangled together whereby um, the balanced audio coming from here is actually possible to be understood by the microphone input of your computer. So you need a little bit of gizmos for that, but it's like 10 bucks, 10, 10 euros to, uh, to put that together and you can take in the actual pro signal you get from a mixer. Um, thing that I also usually go to conferences with a small uh, microphone that just plugs into there and does everything. Um, in this particular instance, I'm actually using, uh, it's the cigar shaped thing over there. It's on one of the later images that I will show you. Um, this one has the downside of the left input being the left channel and the right input, the right channel of a stereo bit. And I, was, I only plug in, on, plug in one side. So I use software to make that mono signal actual stereo again. Um, but that lowers the volume a bit. But you now, things you solve. Um, getting the video. So there are in fact two video sources. There's the camera, obviously, and the laptop's slides. You want to, pin, you want to capture those individually. That is at least the way to get it nicer, because if you like have the, the, the smartphone just looking at the screen, it'll be fairly faded. And sometimes, particularly when you have something like red text over a black background, that tends to be really difficult to pick up. So you want to have, have a direct feed off of that. The way we do it is you have the, uh, the image coming off the laptop. You usually you decide on a format, my, my advice would be f uh, just to go with HDMI. Um, there are really cheap, like five euro splitters on AliExpress. Split them up, one side goes to the projector, the other side goes to you. And you feed that into one of these, thing, these things. Uh, top left is an El Gato, uh, Iron Geek uses that. Um, does Full HD, I think, but at a low frame rate. Uh, meaning that if you have a upscale laptop, that thing won't be able to capture it, won't be able to understand it. The one on the right is an other media. It, has, it is USB 3, so it has enough bandwidth. That's the problem with the Elgato. It's USB 2, so not enough bandwidth to take a full HD image for the full um, 50 to 60 frames a second. So uh, the other media does not have that problem. I use the thing on the bottom, which is a Magewell uh, Pro Capture USB something. Um, it's a USB thing again. You'll notice that it only has a hole on one end, and I will get to that in a moment, because I use uh, the top two, you just plug in an HDMI cable, and everybody has an HDMI cable. The problem is, in my opinion, with HDMI cables, once you make them long, 
they really quickly break. And you'd be like, well, it, it worked like five minutes ago, like on, on the same setup, and all of a sudden it's like, sorry, no. Um, so I use this. This is STI, it's uh, basically digital coax. Pro hopefully a lot of you people know it from like uh, the old days, uh, 10 base C and all that and networky bits. Um, I use the connector on the right, the left one is for fairly new kit, um, which as it happens is close to but not identical what that USB thing was using. Um, so moving on, um, I capture it with one of these. Uh, the USB thing again, uh, it has a small uh, uh, small connector, it's MCX, to the SDI cable, uh, connector, which is that thing. Um, you might think that the card on the top has two inputs, it does not. The top one is the input and the bottom one is the output again, it loops the signal so multiple devices can uh, stand in tandem. Um, yeah, sad part is these things are kind of pricey, they're about 300 euros each. So, um, and well, you need two. Um, let's not go there just yet. Um, so you need two. Um, the, I feed everything of, into a PC. Um, that's why I'm using PCIe cards. If you want to use a laptop, you already like, you need to use USB devices just by default. Um, I chose not to do that, the, 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 the go the laptop route, Iron Geek does, I don't. Um, mainly because um, I need the horsepower of a really full powered CPU and the mobile devices just can't keep up with the way I want to record my things. Um, so one of the things I do, um, you will notice with the camera over there that it's tilted, I'm filming in portrait. And for one, the camera itself doesn't like that, but um, the reason I do this is if you look at my streams, you will notice that the, uh, the camera section is a small vertical bit. Um, given uh, knowing that, you can either film in landscape and cut out the section that you need, by which you would then throw out a fair chunk of the uh, of the data provided to you by the camera sensor by tilting it you can use the full sensor so you get more image data put in if you then downsize that and denoise it a little bit you get really nice smooth images uh, as opposed to because this is a not particularly expensive camera and before this I was using quite literally the cheapest HDMI camera you can find which is about 200 euros-ish. Um, those things make a, uh, make a lot of noise. So there's speckling going on and as a result your video compresses really poorly and it kind of looks very busy even at times when there's nothing going on, particularly when you have a black background. So if you just tilt the camera, you get just a better image. One of the things I used to do before to do that was to use a 3D printed mount and that had the downside of <laughs> breaking. Um, by the way, if you have a chance, avoid Charles de Gaulle Airport, because, yeah, no, I went through there and two of them broke. Um, they, I, I don't know, they throw with your suitcase or whatever. Um, combining it all, usually when I go with my so-called fixed setup, um, you get this, um, full on PC, um, yeah, it's big, but this is, uh, so as a result, this is what I use when I just drive to places. Yes, I did drive from Apeldoorn in the Netherlands to uh, Warsaw. Took two days. Um, but um, it's compact enough. I, can f I have four of these fixed things and I have an additional three mobile, which I'll show in a picture later. And I, okay, there we go. Um, and the, uh, I can I can fit all six of those. Well, I can fix six of those in the back of my in the boot of my car, and it'll close and it'll look nice and no problems. Um, so let's quickly go over the screen. Um, the the B size logo that you see here, because yes, this image was just taken. Uh, this is OBS. That's the logo. Um, that's what I used to, to record the combination of everything. 
But just in case, I have those four little X terms here on the top, which individually record the camera, the laptop, the audio, and another, there's a third capture card in there because redundancy. Um, so even if OBS were to fail, I still have everything I need to combine to make a proper video. Because the one mistake that people tend to make when I'm using multiple uh, setups, uh, I have volunteers operating the thing, they need to tell it to start recording, to stop recording. And people forget, or they're just too late, or whatever. So I can just go to the separate recordings I make, combine everything, and done. Um, obviously, when OBS does everything, it's much, much faster to edit in the end, but yeah. um, So the mobile thing looks like this, and most people would find this kind of scary. <laughs> um, the audio thing is that thing over there. Here you have that capture card. There's another one near it, but I don't see it right now. Um, what, are you, what you basically have is the PC without the box. I ask uh, venues to provide me with the power supply unit because it's bulky and heavy, hence not very nice for planes. Uh, I, I ask them to provide the tripod because it's, again, so, ha so big it's difficult to bring with you. And usually also uh, ask them to provide the screen. This, in this particular case, happens to be my own. Um, yeah. Uh, record everything on an SSD, which is there because of weight, not because you need the speed, because you really don't. Um, yeah, um, put it all together, throw it online, and yeah, Bob's your uncle. So that's kind of what I think I wanted to say. Yep, because I had to, to keep it brief. I hope this was sufficiently brief. <laughs> Angelica. <laughs> um, so are there questions? The best question, well, the best experience I had involved the Hackathon t-shirt. So I have from the Nolcon conference, I have this really cool t-shirt uh, that has some scribbles at the front. And people always are first assuming like, ooh, this looks uh, Arabic or something. Maybe he's a terrorist. It's, it reads uh, hacker phonetically in Hindi. So I'm there at an, in a, at an airport in, uh, in India for Nolcon Goa. And um, over there, airport security is of the type where they basically need a reason not to shoot you. And uh, I'm standing there for the, waiting for the guy with the wand to do his thing. So you're standing like that. And he does zoom, zoom. Hacker! <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So yeah, um, and I also didn't like the fact that my suitcase at that point, um, so Nelcon Goa is three tracks, so I needed to bring three rigs. I can fit two in a single Pelican, but uh, the, the, the Pelican that is the size of carry-on luggage, which is great for EasyZ who doesn't care about the weight, because this is, I think, 28 kilos in that it's like a big hunk of metal, basically. <laughs> so when I tried to put and take that through, uh, um, when I went uh, to India, I had everything in a regular suitcase, and that thing weighed 36 kilos coming in. Coming back, I took a few bottles of booze. I mean, hey, tourist. So yeah, hey, I, I do am human. Um, so yeah, all of a sudden it was like too heavy, and you needed to take something out. So. Of all the, the gizmos you see down here, which do all sorts of conversions to go from whatever the laptop provides to HDMI and uh, the capture cards and the, the, the sound the capturing thing is in there. Again, just a big, heavy little box of metal and uh, try to take that through security and as a separate thing now, as carry on. And yeah, going to the security booths like, yeah, I don't think you want to put this through the machine. Oh, no, 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 it'll be fine. Okay, okay, I warned you. <laughs> so they pull through it. Yeah, thing blinks and it's like, yeah, I think we're going to have to inspect that. Yes, I think you do. Any more?
how many how many gadgets do you have with you every time you go? Like, what, what was maybe the second question? What's what, what's the typical compatibility issue that you have with all sorts of you know mixers, cables, and? I usually have problems with old MacBooks because for some reason they have a uh, frame rate in its in, in their output to HDMI that is not standard. Um, and as a result, what I get is like smooth image, hey, nothing. Smooth image, hey, nothing. Which is really annoying to fix. Um, what often also happens is that people show up with a laptop going like, yeah, this thing only does VGA. And in 98% of situations, the only thing they ever worked with was VGA, but there is a plug for something else. The only exception is that thing, <laughs> which actually genuinely only has VGA. Oh, and at Hardware I.O., which was last September, there uh, was a guy who coming up with a laptop which was suitably ancient. It ran XP. So, quick fix. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't often happen. <laughs> now, audio-wise, things tend to be easy. The pr main problem is the combination of whatever the laptop provides, getting that in, and the compatibility of the projector, which tends to be kind of lacking. This particular one, for instance, we're now feeding it 720p, whereas everything here tends to be 180p. Um, yeah, so. That's the sort of thing you need to fix. I'm just noticing that this machine is making noise, which is probably because I'm looking at the live stream. Oh yes, we're doing live stream. Um, it's a default feature of OBS and um, highly recommended. Anything else? <laughs> okay, the last one. Uh, how do you max all the videos? I combine them. Like, do you like when you stream? Do you like? Um, mix all the videos at once or then and then you don't edit the video afterwards or you edit the videos afterwards uh, I don't know I do both so first of all when you live stream that is literally just a very long video yeah. and that goes straight to YouTube and I don't touch it anymore because one of the things YouTube does is it recompresses the video this is also sort of required because the video I produce here is about 10 megabits a second and um, if you were to look at that, uh, look a uh, few that on your la on your mobile or whatever, uh, a it would eat through your bundle like you wouldn't believe, and b um, you'd need a fairly quick connection to be able to smoothly view that. So instead, uh, uh, what goes to YouTube is theirs, but I also store locally. And if, when I'm not live streaming, the thing that I'm storing locally is the exact same thing that I'm streaming. And um, the only thing I have to do. Uh, which is for my own to make for myself just to make it easier to edit later, is I um, I tell OBS to uh, in between talks to say okay stop recording start recording makes a new file and then the file that it is made I can then quickly go and like uh, cut here cut there clean up the audio done to go from a recording to an actual video that we later publish on YouTube takes about five minutes. And most of this time is waiting for I.O. And a, bit, a, little, a little bit of effort on my part to clean out the audio. So, Good stuff. time is up. Nice work from Then time's up. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you so much for this. And uh, enjoy the rest of the conference.